Hello, this is my ECE 591 class presentation. My name is Sarah Gladder. Welcome to my presentation about the multimodal approach to zero shot classification. My presentation is based on the academic paper titled Coordinated Joint Multimodal Embeddings for Generalized Audiovisual Zero Shot Classification and Retrieval of Videos. The first section I will cover will be the general overview of the paper, as well as an outline of the upcoming presentation. First is a summary of the paper's abstract. This paper pre rep presents a multimodal approach for zero-shot learning classification and retrieval of videos. In the past, zero-shot learning has been used strictly for images or visual modality. This paper aims to prove that using a multimodal model is shown to improve the performance of zero-shot classification. It also creates a way to determine which modality is the dominant one and the one better at classifying a video and also retrieving. Now for a quick run through of all of the topics that will be discussed in the presentation. First, we will discuss the introduction, where I will explain the high level overview of the project, as well as the steps taken during the ZSL project. The next topic will be zero-shot learning, where I will explain what ZSL is and how it is utilized for this project. Then the multimodal embeddings will be discussed, and in this topic, the losses of the neural network will also be covered. Then a brief explanation of the data set will be presented. Then the experiments that occurred during the project. Finally, in the conclusion, I will present the data and results found from the paper. Now for the introduction of the multimodal zero-shot learning project. Here is a high-level diagram of the project. There are three separate data inputs. They are shown as video, shown as the red diamond, audio, the blue circle, and text, green pentagon. The project takes these three embeddings and places them onto a shared space represented here as the dotted circles. The paper states that the aim is to learn the space such that the corresponding embedding vectors for the same classes have lower distances than those of different classes. Once embeddings are learned, ZSL classification and cross-modal retrieval can be posed as a nearest neighbor search in the embedding space. So the goal of the project is to correctly classify multimodal data using zero-shot learning. The ZSL papers project steps are as followed. Introduce the problem of audiovisual zero-shot learning Construct a suitable data set for project. Propose a multimodal classification method. And then propose a dominant multimodal method. My next topic I will present is zero shot learning or ZSL. Before we go further into learning about this paper and project, I will explain what zero shot learning is. In my explanation, I will be using image classification ZSL as an example. The V7 platform explains it well. Zero-shot learning is a machine learning paradigm where a pre-trained deep learning model is made to generalize on a novel category of samples, i.e. the training and testing sets are disjointed. This means that there are seen and unseen classes needed to be classified. This image represents an overview of the process. First, the seen data sets are trained. They are training encoders that will be utilized later, seen here as the embedded network. Then when an unseen image is put through the neural network, like our horse here, it goes through the encoder comes out as a class feature vector, 
and then is projected onto a shared embedding space and is classified. Now, I will break this down further. Here is a visual example of ZSL. Here we have two modalities, text, shown as Pepper the Aussie Pup, and image, which is a little small image of a dog. During the pre-training, both the image and the text encoders are trained. Note, they are trained with the seen data sets. The goal of zero-shot learning model is to minimize the difference between the encodings of the image and its corresponding text, as stated by an article in Towards Data Science. The text vector is the output of the text encoder and is shown here as a, the purple T's vector. Similarly, the green I's vector is the image vectors, which is the image encoder's output. The smaller the distance between the text vector and the image vector, that will be the correct classification. Now for when an unseen data set is tested. First, a data set classifier list is created from the labels. Then this list is placed through the pre-trained text encoder. The output is the text vector shown here as the purple T's. Next, an unseen image is placed through the image encoder and the output is I. Then both vectors are projected onto a shared embedding space and the closest I and T become the correct classification output. For example, this is a photo of a dog. As you can see, a dog went into the image encoder and a long list of labels went into the text encoder. Now, the project has three modalities, so the zero-shot learning is slightly different than how I ex just explained it, where I explained it with only text and uh, image data, with, which is only two modalities. Zero-shot learning is very popular since it is a real problem and a concern for real-world applications. VSL has been used mainly for visual image classification by using images and text like previously talked about. Recently, in 2020, it has been used for object detection in images. Work for ZSL and audio classification, however, is very wet, rare, and work for dual modality is novel for this paper. This paper takes three modalities and project, projects them onto a shared embedding space. I will go into more detail about projecting in the next section. For now, I will discuss how the project used calibrated stacking and generalized CSL, or GZSL. Traditionally, GZSL leans towards the scene class. In order to alleviate this problem, a formula was found in the paper titled An Empirical Study and Analysis of Generalized Zero-Shot Learning for Object Recognition in the Wild. The function below represents a sort of tuning parameter aimed to train the model not to bias towards the scene classes. Since ZSL uses distances to classify its outputs, the formula is a modification of a prediction rule at inference. Now let us discuss the multimodal embeddings. To reiterate, the three types of data used for this project are text, video, and audio modality. These three data inputs are used to be processed through a ZSL model and classified. This is a full high-level diagram of the project, specifically the project, the projecting onto embeddings and the multimodal losses. On the top right, we have the first class cat, and the bottom right is the second class dog. Then on the side, we have the losses. I will discuss each part of the diagram in detail. As mentioned many times previously, this project deals with three types of data, video, audio, and text. The diagram represents the breakdown of the data into the embedding vectors, which will be used later to classify the data. First, the data is put into the encoders, which output the data as embeddings. 
These embeddings will then be projected onto a shared space. This is the ZSL model. Now to discuss the losses of the model. For example, we are comparing two data sets, which will be referred to as P and Q, previously shown as cat and dog. There are three losses that will be discussed. The first two, shown in red, are the bimodal triplet losses, where A and B are the video vectors and T represents the text. Keep in mind, this training is only being done with scene classes. The paper states that these two losses, LTA and LTV, folk force the audio and video embeddings to be closer to the correct class embeddings by a certain margin. This margin will be discussed in the next slide. The yellow loss is to ensure that the cross modal similarities between the audio and visual video is in the common embedding space. As mentioned before, the two red losses control the class constraints of the project. They do so by forcing the two embeddings closer to each other by a factor of delta, which is the incorrect class embeddings. The yellow formula is to ensure the cross-modality similarity between the audiovisual streams that come from the same video in the common embedding space, as the paper states. The full loss function for the project is a simple weighted average of the three losses. The formula is shown here. Next section we will be discussing is the data set that was used for the project. Since the project uses dual multimodality, both audio and visual, a distinctive data set was needed. The data set used for the ZSL project was sourced and sampled from a large public source titled AudioSet. This data set had 527 audio video events, each with multiple labels. To study the ZFL path more efficiently, the project separated the large data set into 156,416 separate audio video events, each with only one unique label. As seen in the above table, these classes are the classes as well as the number of data examples for each. The asterisk represents if the class is in the unseen category. To separate the seen and unseen classes, there are 10 classes spanning all of the groups chosen to be labeled as unseen classes. These unseen classes must not have an embedding similarity to the other kinetics trained classes by a factor of 0.8. This prevents the unseen classes from being too closely related to the seen classes. Next section will be about the experiments of the project. Now for the neural network setup. First is the video or image. This data input is a video. The neural network is an inflated 3D CNN network that has been pre-trained on the kinetics data set and a large video data set. The output of the vec network is a um, 1,024 1, one-dimensional vector. To correlate this back to our previous imaging, the 3D CNN network would be the trained embeddings, and the 1,024D vector would be the video embeddings output vector. This 1024D vector is possible since the video features were averaged before the classification layer. The audio input is trained via spectrograms of the audio clips in the training data sets. This input is put through seven convolutional layers of the network and then is averaged into a 1024 vector output. The text network is a word to vec which is pre-trained on Wikipedia. The output of this nectar is a 300 one-dimensional vector. 
This is how the paper states how they report the performance. They report the mean class of accuracy for the classification task and the mean average precision for the retrieval task. The performance for the seen, seen here as S, and unseen, seen here as U, classes are obtained after classification retrieval over all the classes, S and U. The harmonic mean, seen here as HW, or HM, of S and U indicates how well the system performs on both seen and unseen categories on average. For classification, they classify each test example and for retrieval, they perform leave one out testing. For example, each test example is considered as a query for the rest being the gallery. The performance reported is averaged and a less strict metric is often used in the case of zero shot retrieval, which is not exactly correct. Now, here is a graph showing the classification results for two different models when changing the bias parameter. The two graphs are the equivalent of calibrated stacked performance. The red line is the harmonic mean, the blue line is the unseen classes, and the green is the seen classes. The X axis represents the bias parameter discussed previously, and the accuracy is shown on the Y axis. The performance increases with the initial increase in bias and then falls after a certain point as expected. The paper states this. The best performance of the bias, seen here around 2.5 bias and around here at 5 bias, were chosen to be fixed for the testing sets. Here are the two types of models used for testing and experimenting. The coordinated cross model joint embeddings was a novel method created specifically to be used during this paper. It was compared against the generalized canonical correlation analysis, GCCA, which is a continuation of the standard extension of the conical correlation analysis method, CCA, which is typically used only for two modalities, image and text. Oops. <clears throat> the paper summarizes this table results as follows. The table gives the performance of the different modal models for the task of zero shot classification. We take multiple observations here. The video modality performs better than the audio modality for the task. For example, here 33.34 compared to 22.22 HM, which is interesting as the original data set was constructed for audio event detection. We also, uh, the paper also observes that when both audio and video modalities are used by simply concatenating the feature from the respective pre-trained networks, the performance increases to 34.70. This shows that adding the audio modality is helpful for zero-shot classification. Our coordinated joint multimodal embeddings, denoted CJME in the table, improves the performance of video and audio only models on the respective test sets by modest but constant margins. This highlights the eff efficiency of the proposed method to learn joint embeddings, which are comparable than individually training models. The performance of the proposed method is lower without attenuation learning and selective multimodality based test time prediction the concatenated input model, but it is comparable to when training and testing with attenuation, 34.39. Also, when we do not train for attention, but use selective mo modality-based prediction, the performance fails, 28.76. But these comparisons validate that the multi modality attention learning is an important addition to the base model multimodal embeddings learning framework. Now for audio and visual retrieval. The paper states that since CJME learns to embed both audio and 
video modality in common space, it allows for doing cross-modal retrieval from audio to video and vice versa. The following table shows the performance of different models retrieving using zero shot learning. Seen here, the test is in the first column or the first row, the test is retrieving text and audio. And you can see that the seen and unseen are very different in the results. The second row represents the input being text and the output being video. Again, seen and input have very different results. Specifically with the three um, different model attempts. Then lastly, the test is the input and the audio visual is given as the output. Here are further results shown. These are the retrieval results from the scene classes. For example, the car was given as a text input and these were all audio outputs. As seen here, all are correct. And then there is also a motorcycle, which is a, a fine problem. Then the dog is given as an example and all of the video modalities return a dog. Then a cat audio is given and cat video is retrieved. Again, one error. Finally, a bird video is given and bird audio is ret returned. And again, one error. Now this is very different than with unseen classes. When a pig is given, only one out of the five videos returns a pig video. Same with the bus. However, in this situation, all of these are similar, except for the church bell audio to, and the stream audio, to the um, classification, meaning that their distance is similar to bus. Then the gunshot audio returns all gunshot videos, which is a nice and pleasant surprise. And then again, the bus audio returns, sorry, the bus video returns all bus audios except for one bird audio. Now for the conclusion of this paper. The paper states that they presented a novel method, which they called coordinated cross mode dull joint embeddings for the task of audiovisual zero shot classification and retrieval of videos. The method learns to embed audio, video, and text into a common embedding space and then performs nearest neighbor retrieval in that space for classification and retrieval. The loss function that they proposed had three components, two bimodal text audio and text video triple losses, and an audio video cross-modal similarity-based loss. Motivated by the fact that the two modalities might carry different amounts of information for different examples, the project team also proposed a modality attentive learning framework. The attention part learns to predict the dominant modality for the task i.e. if the object is occluded but the audio is clear and the base of the prediction on that modality only. This was not discussed in this presentation. The team reported extensive experiments to validate the method and showed advantages of the method over baselines, as well as demonstrated cross-modal retrieval, which is not possible with other baseline models. They also constructed a data set appropriate for the task with a subset of large scale unconstrained data set for audio event detection and video. That is the end of my topic. Here are my sources. Thank you for listening. And I apologize if there's any fuzzy photos or any unclear words.